Greetings, Eric Backer, naturopath from New Zealand, author of Candida Crusher. Thanks for looking at my video. What is phycocyanin? Phycocyanin, what a weird name. Well, it's actually the bluey, greeny kind of a pigment that's associated with spirulina. You may have heard of spirulina. It's an algae that grows really in salty lakes. It was initially discovered in Africa, I believe. I've got a book here, one out of my library. Spirulina, 1983 book. It's been around a while. And interesting book written by a Japanese guy, Hiroshi Namakura. And Dr. Namakura really was uh, the person who was responsible for getting spirulina into mainstream. I think it would have been back, well, way back in the 60s or 70s, uh, you know, when it became sort of popular. I think the hippies, in the hippie area, a lot of hippies used to, um, the people still use the word hippie. Sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? From my generation, the hippie. So hippies used to really get into veganism, vegetarianism, particularly, I think, around the 60s on the um, west coast of America, San Francisco. They would have consumed a lot of spirulina. Spirulina is considered to be, uh, by vegans, like as nirvana, like it's a high-protein food, 70% protein, uh, exceptional. So this phycocyanin really is the bluey-greeny component um, that allows uh, photosynthesis to take place properly. Uh, with with this uh, algae, so it allows the sunlight to come down, hit this algae, and then convert that and allow it to grow. It turns the sunlight into energy, basically. So um, it assists chlorophyll, particularly chlorophyll is another pigment found in, in you know in algae. This greeny pigment it assists it to work even better with low light conditions. So it, it's really sort of a little bit like a solar panel kind of a thing. You know, you could liken it to. So chlorella. Uh, and spirulina, uh, chlorella, I believe, is different from spirulina. One is single cell, the other is multi cell. I believe that chlorella is like a multi cell organism, and spirulina is like single cell, or it might be the other way around. Not quite sure. But anyway, it does contain B12 um, spirulina, but it's a poorly absorbed form of B12. So don't get all excited that, you know, if you're a vegan, that you can forego any other kind of source of B12 just to live on this. You can't. So, the phycocyanin uh, is proven to be quite anti-inflammatory and also it has a very good ability to uh, quench oxidative stress. So it's particularly good to stop accelerated aging in people. So this is a very healthy food uh, for people to consume small amounts on a regular basis. Is it anti-candida? I wouldn't say it's anti-candida, but I would definitely say it's an adjunct to a diet like chlorella. So that's a little bit about phycocyanin. So it's that pigmenty sort of a thing. It helps to quench oxidative stress. It's stunning to now to be discovered to reduce uh, inflammation in the body. So it could well be something for somebody with autoimmune disease. You know, you know, or, and in fact, inflammation is something that causes, that underpins most chronic disease. So this could well be uh, coming up in the future, one of the best foods I've ever discovered for inflammation. Interesting, when I was looking at this book just before, that uh, when the Spanish came to Mexico, uh, in the 1600s, they noticed um, the Aztecs were, in fact, you know, digging stuff out of ponds and drying stuff, and it turned out to be spirulina. So spirulina is being, being consumed by the Aztecs. So yeah, is it a good food? I think it is. Is it safe to have when you've got candida? It is. But that's a little bit of story about phycocyanin. Thanks for tuning in.